My name is Tyler Fornis, and I am one of the co-hosts of the Good, the Bad, and the Hungi AEW podcast here on the Voice of Wrestling Podcasting Network. We take a broad scope approach to the world of all elite wrestling and the entire universe of Tony Khan. We talk about the big matches, the big stars, the promos, the storylines. And we also look at it from a big picture perspective. How are things going to change over the course of the next 10 years with AEW still in the picture? How are companies like WWE going to adapt and adjust to AEW? Are they going to be a similar way like they did with WCW in the late 1990s? Will there be a counterpunch? We talk about all of that and more on the good, the bad, and the hungry every week on the Voice of Wrestling Network. Hey everyone, what you're about to hear is a free preview of a podcast on our Patreon. If you want to hear the full thing, please go to flagshippatreon.com and subscribe to either our $5 or $10 tier. A subscription to the $5 tier gives you access to most of our bonus audio, including Flagship Plus, the Overrun, as well as retro content like November to Remember, our retro audio documentaries, as well as exclusive breaking news reports. You can upgrade to the $10 tier and unlock all of our bonus content including written columns and reviews, as well as live shows like Instant Reaction Live and the Flagship Live, as well as all of the other benefits available on the $5 tier. Once again, that's FlagshipPatreon.com. And now to the free preview of one of our exclusive episodes. It is Flagship Plus, your supplemental flagship add-on for March 25th, found only on the $5 and $10 tiers of FlagshipPatreon.com. Today, we are going to take a look at the WWE style presentation of Mercedes Monet and AEW, why it's happening, what I think about it, what it could mean for the future of both Mercedes and AEW. Then we will take a peek at the uh, lineups for WrestleMania weekend coming up next week. Not even WrestleMania weekend anymore, it's now WrestleMania week. And we will take a look at the WrestleMania week lineups, which, uh, look, they don't look good. Is it finally over? Can we finally put the nail in the coffin of WrestleMania weekend? Look, we know that these WrestleMania week events aren't going to stop. There will be announcements for next year. There will be another overloaded slate of shows. In next year's city and the city after that. But looking at this lineup in Philadelphia. If I would have told you 10 years ago. That there was going to be a Wrestlemania weekend. In Philadelphia of all places. And the lineup was going to look like this. You wouldn't have believed me. But uh, this is where we are. I think it's a statement towards the state of current indie wrestling. And we will discuss the lineup of shows. How we got here. Try to find the diamonds in the rough because I think there are a couple shows that are worth keeping your eye on. And try to figure out a path to our WrestleMania week coverage, which, you know, last year we had audio every night covering virtually every show that aired somewhere in the world during that week. And this year it might be a little tricky, to be quite honest, because there's just not a lot to sink your teeth into. But we will get to all of that. We're opening up Flagship Plus this week. And look, I told you guys. Did I just say this week? This isn't a weekly show. This is a semi-daily show. I almost called this thing Flagship Daily until Rich talked me out of it. Because if you call something Flagship Daily, people are going to want it every day. So uh, we went with Flagship Plus. But... um. Look, I told you on Flagship Plus that we were going to try to cover the things that might not normally make the run sheet of the uh, proper weekly three hour plus four hours this past week flagship podcast. And by the way, I thought that the producer, Andrew Rich and Rich Lata and uh, the honorary Rich, Grant Akuma, he might really be a Rich for all I know. Did a fantastic job on the flagship. Krejci was there too and he was okay. Uh, No, but those guys all did an outstanding job. And Rich did over four hours of audio with those guys. As soon as I saw the lineup and the topics, 
I just chuckled to myself. Rich thinks he's going to cram all that into, into three. I, there was no chance. And then the dynamite review went like almost two hours itself. So um, a tremendous flagship this week. And I will be back this week with Krejci. And I thought uh, everybody brought their A game. The AEW analysis from those guys was top notch. Some topics you might not normally hear with the with the music and wrestling and the video game talk. And, you know, Gran Akuma, I thought, was outstanding. And he's getting rave reviews. A lot of people are trying to uh, push him into doing some more regular audio. And, and obviously that's something we would be open to and something that we will discuss with him. And we'll see, you know. But um, I thought... Akuma offered some very interesting perspectives when reviewing the Noah show, the Great Voyage show in Yokohama, that you're only going to get out of somebody who's been in the ring. You know, in particular, when he was talking about the LJ Cleary versus Hajime O'Hara match and how, you know, it it might be tricky for a guy like LJ Cleary to work with someone like O'Hara who trained in a very specific way and the timing and where you need to be to work with somebody who trained... Uh, who has the background that that O'Hara has isn't always the easiest thing if you're unfamiliar with the style. And those are the kind of insights that people like Rich and I can't really give you. But it's the kind of insight that someone like Gran Akuma, who uh, you know has been in the ring and has worked with a variety of different styles and opponents and trained under a variety of styles, that's the kind of stuff that someone like that can give you. So uh, I thought that was uh, one of the interesting aspects of the, of the of the flagship and the Noah review from the other night. But anyway, let's move on here with uh, flagship plus topics that don't normally make the run sheet would WWE Smackdown WWE Friday night Smackdown qualify as a topic that doesn't normally make the flagship run sheet. I don't recall ever reviewing a Smackdown on audio. I know I've done some written reviews of Smackdown Over the years and behind this paywall, when I do the occasional uh, uh, review roulette and review random television shows that we normally don't review, I can't ever recall doing an audio SmackDown review. That's what you're going to get right now. Because I did plunk down on the couch after the March Madness on one of these nights. I'm losing track of what day it is. And I I was going to say I enjoyed... Some Friday Night Smackdown, but I did not enjoy Friday Night Smackdown. No, quite the opposite. It was a terrible show. Terrible show. Uh, Quite honestly, I don't know how people sit down and watch this show for two hours every week. it's, It's not good. You know, three hours of Raw, that's just completely outrageous. And I, you know. But even two hours of Smackdown, of Blue Raw, and don't let people tell you that these shows are drastically different. They... You know, they're not. I mean, this is just not an enjoyable two hours of wrestling or television or entertainment. And very rarely do I sit down and really pay attention to and watch a three-hour Raw or a two-hour SmackDown. I just can't do it. You guys all know my issues with the modern WWE product for lack of a better term. It is decidedly not for me. So I don't torture myself and watch these shows wall to wall. But if you're going to review something and uh, you're going to have people consume that review, you got to lock in and pay attention. That's what I did this week for SmackDown. Hola, hola, my name is Ricardo. I am the host of the Lucha Jovers podcast here in the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. We are a Spanish speaking show dedicated to discussing and analyzing pro wrestling from all across the world. From AW to CMLL, we talk about American wrestling, Japanese wrestling, and of course, Lucha Libre. If something big happened in the pro wrestling world, we will talk about it. So if you know Spanish or have a friend that knows Spanish or want to practice your Lucha Libre pronunciations, Go listen to the Lucha Jovers podcast right here in the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. Nos vemos por ahí.